morning, I am Dr. Vivek Singh and this is the last section of our video Rheumatic Fever and this section I am going to talk about the treatment and the prophylaxis of the rheumatic fever. Let us see the treatment and prophylaxis. Treatment and prophylaxis. Prophylaxis of rheumatic fever. Now, what is the treatment of the rheumatic fever? I will give you a mnemonics and the mnemonics is B A yes yes BAS which means that the first thing is bed rest. Rest depends upon ESR and temperature. Now if there is no carditis if there is no carditis if the ESR comes to normal and if the temperature is normal if the temperature is normal and the ESR is normal we can till then we have for we have to advise for the bed rest but if there is a carditis then we should advise bed rest two to six weeks after the ESR and the temperature gets normal so just remember it is a bed rest bed rest and the second point is antibiotics in ways. We are targeting the group A beta hemolytic streptococci. So, here we can use benzathin penicillin or procaine penicillin. Benzathin penicillin 1.2 million unit and there is 6 lakhs of procaine penicillin. Both are given IM. Both are given IM is the single dose it is given 10 daily dose 10 days for 10 days daily daily 10 days daily if someone is allergic to benzathin penicillin and procaine penicillin we can go for erythromycin or azithromycin erythromycin azithromycin erythromycin azithromycin in erythromycin 30 milligram per kg per day in 3 divided dose 30 milligram per kg per day in 3 divided dose azithromycin 500 milligram this is per oral 500 milligram this is also per oral OD for 5 days. So, these are the doses of the antibiotic. The second is antibiotic and the third is now salicylates. salicylates. We know that when you use the salicylates, the inflammation in the joints, it gets prompt relief. So, we are using a salicylate and the dose is 60 milligram per kg per day in 6 divided doses and maximum is 8 gram per day. Now in some cases where the salicylates does not work or there is a severe carditis or there is a severe involvement of the joint at that time we can use steroids because there are so many studies that are going on to see the effectiveness of steroids in case of rheumatic fever. So, steroid can be used and the dose is 60 to 120 milligram per day. It is used when the salicylates is not working, when the salicylates is not working. At the same time, it is also used in case of severe carditis and severe polyarthritis. Now, remember salicylates till when we are using the salicylates, till when we are using the salicylates. So, it is used suppose if there is an ESR and the temperature is normal then if the ESR is normal we have to extend and taper for the next 4 to 6 weeks we are using after the ESR is normal we are using for the next 4 to 6 weeks. Similarly, steroids it is used in a tapering dose and when we are tapering steroids Suppose during the tapering of steroid, we are adding the salicylates at last. 
salicylates at last. So we are adding a steroid for some weeks and after that we are tapering the dose of steroid and we are adding the salicylates again we are moving on and we are discontinuing the drug. Okay, this was for the treatment of the rheumatic fever. Now we are going to talk about the prophylaxis in case of rheumatic fever. So there are primary prophylaxis, primary prophylaxis and secondary prophylaxis. Primary is for initial recurrent fever, secondary prophylaxis is for recurrent rheumatic fever, recurrent rheumatic fever. So in primary prophylaxis always remember there should be accurate diagnosis, accurate diagnosis in time and there should be adequate antibiotic doses, antibiotics. In secondary prophylaxis remember if there is no carditis we are going to use for the prophylaxis for the next 5 years if there is carditis we are going to use for 10 years if there is a this is the resolved carditis and there is a surgery there is a surgery so there is a damage, there is a total damage. So at that time we are, so there is no carditis 5 years or till 18 years of age. Whichever is longer for the next 5 years or 18 years of age, whichever is longer. When there is resolved carditis, we are going to use for 10 years or till 25 years of age, whichever is longer. And in case of surgery or in case when there is a damage, total damage to the valves, we are going to use the prophylaxis for lifetime. So it is a lifetime prophylaxis. So remember there is no carditis, resolved carditis and there is case of the total valve damage or when there is a surgery. So at this point what are the drugs? It is benzathine penicillin or oral penicillin V. We can use amoxicillin. We can use the next is erythromycin azithromycin and the second is sulfa diazine sulfa diazine these are the drugs that can be used in the case of for the prophylaxis in case of rheumatic fever so this was the end of our section section 1 2 3 4 and 5 of the rheumatic fever and here is the prophylaxis and the treatment of the rheumatic fever now I am going to summarize the rheumatic fever which we have studied in the last five section. Now rheumatic fever it is a multi-system immunologically mediated inflammatory disease which is caused by group A beta hemolytic streptococci. This is the first point etiology. It is common in the developing countries and the second important point is the main pathogenesis, the main pathogenesis is molecular mimicry. What do you mean by molecular mimicry? You can go to section 2 and you can have a view of that molecular mimicry. Now when there is a molecular mimicry, some inflammatory processes going on in most of the organs of the body that are too important like brain and joints, skin and other parts of the body. Now third point is we are talking about the clinical features. The clinical features involve these joints, heart, the third is the brain, skin and subcutaneous subcutaneous structures these are the clinical features the fourth in fourth section we talk about the investigation investigation and the diagnosis in diagnosis remember 
zones criteria zones criteria here you are talking about the molecular mimicry you are you are talking about the zones criteria and the next point it's treatment for the treatment you can remember b a s s so bed rest antibiotic and salicylates and the steroids now six point is profile laxis now go to the back to the each of the section and have a view of each section and we can just summarize the whole of the rheumatic fever taking a six different sections now thank you for viewing this video and we'll be coming up with next video on different topics till then goodbye